Hi guys, so the Conservatives like to push the idea that work will lift you out of poverty. Now unfortunately there are a number of problems with that idea. For example, many people who are working zero-hour contracts, many people who are working in the gig economy can't afford childcare, so they have to work maybe multiple jobs in order to afford childcare. Others who are working full-time can perhaps afford the childcare, but it means that they are impoverished in other ways. And of course, they have to rely perhaps on universal credit, help from friends or family or some other benefits. Now, you're going to hear this issue raised by a Labour MP and you're going to hear the response from the Conservative Minister who basically dismisses this entire problem. Let's hear the exchange. I lost count of the number of times the Minister has said that all the evidence suggests that work is the best route out of poverty. And we do agree in that the last Labour government showed how it could be done. But under this government, it's simply not true, is it? As we've just heard from my honourable friend, 75% mm -hmm. of children living in poverty are in a family where at least one parent is at work. Mm -hmm. Getting a job is not a route out of poverty that's low paid and insecure if parents can't afford childcare and housing and if the universal credit is going to be cut. So what is the government's strategy for making sure that work does pay? So w one is... Of course, she raised a very valid point as well here about universal credit. Universal credit has been uplifted recently during the pandemic in order to help people get by. An extra £20 a week. That's going to be taken away in September. Now, the idea behind taking it away is to encourage people back into work. There are a number of problems with that, but the main problem with that is that many people can't find work. Maybe they're in a deprived area. Maybe the industry that they used to work in has been decimated by the pandemic. There are no jobs available. And also there are many people who are disabled who can't actually get into jobs, can't get jobs or can't work because of their disability. Those people who are receiving this extra £20 a week uplift, that's going to be taken away from them also. I think you're ready for a question. But the statistics show that full-time work substantially reduces the chance of poverty. The absolute poverty rate of a child where both parents work full-time is 3% compared to 47% where one or more parents are in part-time work. What? <laughs> this is not an argument. <laughs> so 47% is where one parent is working part-time and 3% is when both parents are working full-time. 3% is a huge number of people. 3% is a massive number. It may sound small, but 3% is 3% too much. It should be 0% because your entire argument is that if people are working, they're working full time, then they will not be poor. Now he's talking about absolute poverty. So there are many people who are not in absolute poverty, but are on, bo on the borderline. And they're... Um, we don't actually have figures for those, but a lot of people are in some level of poverty and they're relying on universal credit and they're working full time at the same time. So his entire argument, the, the Conservative Party's argument that we need to force people off universal credit by sanctioning them or punishing them in some way into employment because it lifts them out of poverty, doesn't work, doesn't fly. So that's why we're supporting people into full-time work wherever possible, for example, through our comprehensive childcare offer. Now, as I said, we had a jobs miracle before this pandemic and through our... A jobs miracle. Many people who are employed, when the employment went up, it's not because of full-time employment, it's not because of stable jobs. Many people are still working in the gig economy and on zero-hour contracts. And we've seen the, the recent phenomena of fire and rehire where many people have been laid off their job and rehired under worse conditions. 30 billion pound plan for jobs and with the help of businesses up and down our country we will again but Mr Speaker part of that is having a welfare system that encourages and incentivizes work and with universal credit that's exactly what we've got. Universal credit is not an incentive for people to work it's a punishment it forces people to work and apply to universal credit. The idea that people are working, they're not earning enough to survive, so they have to rely on the state, the taxpayer. So the taxpayer is picking up the tab where companies are not paying their staff enough or where the situation is so dire that people have to work uh, whatever hours they can get under terrible conditions. We've seen it with 
uh, in the gig economy and in particular zero hour contracts where many people are working they go into their they go into work they take public transport they arrive at the at the place of work and they're told at the last minute by text message we don't need you today those people are working but they're still in poverty now this is inform this is data from the government's own website this is from the house of commons library and it says here this is a um, percentage of children aged 0 to 15 in relative poverty before housing costs 2019 to 2020 so you can see here the lighter shades are the lower percentages and the darker shades are the higher percentages and you can see between 22 and 53 percent this is unacceptable in relative poverty why are these children in poverty their families are they receiving sufficient welfare they're not are they working probably some of them are working but they're not working enough to lift themselves out of poverty this is from um, the Roundtree Foundation it says here in work poverty so I've actually before that I just wanted to read this comment from uh, their report this is from last year it says universal credit is not enough and the five-week wait causes poverty to survive the five-week wait people borrow money this takes up to 15 months to repay furlough has made it worse as uncertainty in income increased it goes on to say about in work poverty uh, in work poverty was rising pre coronavirus in work poverty defined here as the definition as the sorry the proportion of workers who are in poverty has risen in recent years and studded almost 13% in 2018-2019. There are some groups who are more likely to, be, to experience in-work poverty and have a harder time escaping poverty. The sector, the number of hours and hourly pay, location, someone's gender, ethnicity and age and, uh, and barriers such as availability of childcare, which was raised in the video, and transport all determine whether someone is in poverty and whether they are able to escape it through work. So the idea that we just provide jobs and that will lift people out of poverty is a lie. The Conservative Party know this, but they continue to push it. They don't care about dealing with poverty. If they truly did, they would have a robust, a generous system that lift, truly lifted people out of poverty. They're able to spend money on vanity projects they're able to you know, flush money down the toilet when it came to Brexit, but when it actually comes to lifting people out of poverty, they don't give a damn. They haven't, they don't, and they will not. And unfortunately, I see these numbers increasing um, and the situation for many people becoming more and more desperate. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?